Okay, back in the shop again. Work continues on the front bolster for the Super M. You can see we got some red paint on some of these hard to access areas once this is put together. And the seals showed up. Trust me, I have the worm shaft seal installed down here. You can't see it because I have this laying down. And I also installed the uh, vertical shaft seal about 10 inches up into here. It's about in here, in this area here inside this tube. Really fun to install, but those are in there. Seal numbers that I used, well, we'll just say that steering worm shaft seal, IH number was a 43800DA, crosses to an SKF9878. Quick specs on that if you so choose to look one up. One inch shaft, 1.499 bore, 1.503 seal OD, quarter inch wide. Now that vertical shaft seal, that was a IH number 80093H, crosses to an SKF15039. Specs on that, inch and a half shaft, 2.37 bore, 2.378 seal OD, half inch wide. My apologies everybody, upon reviewing that last clip, I was trying to talk a little bit too fast. I should have said 2.374 inch bore. Didn't want to let that go. So, here are all the parts and pieces that go in the bolster. Not a whole lot to look at. We have the quadrant gear and a little bit of a wear pattern on those teeth right in the center. That's pretty much to be expected, but I've seen a lot worse. The splines are all in good condition. We have the thrust washer that goes beneath it the nut and top washer, and then the plug for the worm shaft. Top cover, of course, here's the thrust bearing that goes on that pedestal shaft. I cleaned all the old grease out, packed it full of new grease. That is ready to go. Gasket for the top cover and our new felt ring seal in the retainer that goes above the thrust bearing. So let's start putting it all together. Thrust bearing will go on first. I should mention we're putting a light layer of grease on all of the mating parts from here on out, so carefully guide that down into place. That's good. Next comes the felt ring seal with retainer. And I cut that felt seal to be a fairly snug fit on this shaft. I'd rather have it a little bit tighter to start out with because it can wear in. Plus any grease that rubbed out of the bearing down here, that felt seal will take care of. And hopefully lubricate itself with to some extent. All right, pedestal shaft goes in now. I have applied grease to all the bushings inside the pedestal, upper and lower, as well as the corresponding areas on the shaft. And I'm protecting the upper seal with some ele electrical tape wrapped around the splines where that quadrant gear goes on. I don't want to cut that seal up in there now. into the bolster now put that thrust washer back it goes beneath the quadrant gear now remember those T marks I made on disassembly we have the one right there and we have the other one here so we'll put the gear back on the same way that it originally was and the upper washer and the nut Once I got the nut tight, put the cotter pin in to lock it in position. We'll just do a test here. And that is smooth. Liking it. And to finish up, put the top cover gasket in place. Top cover goes on that. Now I've just started the top cover bolts by hand because we're not gonna fill this up with any kind of grease or lubrication until that worm shaft can go in. And there is that new worm shaft seal I told you about. It is indeed in there. One thing to note, as per parts manual illustration, lock washers beneath the back three top cover bolts and these thinner star washers beneath the front two. I believe that is because the nose tin work fits so closely to the heads of these bolts as evidenced by 
the witness wear marks on them. The star washers are just thin enough to get those down that much more and create the clearance you're gonna need. So the last thing I'll do is just loosely thread the plug in the front where that worm shaft goes. And that's as much as I can do on this bolster until we get ready to put it in the tractor. We have the hand crank mechanism working, vertical shaft, everything is resealed, reassembled. We move on to something else. Squad Senior, back on the Super M project again. Today's project, we're going to see if we can get this head on. And I've got the rocker assembly here on the bench, get that tore apart, hopefully cleaned up and maybe that on too. But first off, we'll start with the head, see how that goes, get that all tuned up and stuff. I got all the surfaces cleaned. Took uh, some carb cleaner, rag, wiped them down, made sure they were lint free. Got my gasket laid out here. And this is a gasket that definitely needs sealer on. This side is all steel. And this side is like a gasket material. Now, steel on steel on these heads, this steel surface will go to the block side. Definitely does need some sealer. And an interesting thing on this gasket... It is a Felpro gasket, and if you will notice right here, it says sealer and retorque is required, and this is the upside. Now, for a sealer, I'm going to use this Permatex brand Super 300 Forma gasket. It's a, a black substance, puts on with a brush, liquid form. And that's been working real good. Uh, a lot of guys have recommended that. I've kind of done some search and stuff. So I think this should uh, be good for what I want it to use it for. So anyway, I'll start getting this gasket prepped. Uh, I'll have to probably get Squatch 253 to lift this head on for me. So let's get started. Okay, we'll start coating the block side first. As you can see, kind of a black gooey stuff. Pretty good stuff. So, and here's another case. A little bit goes a long ways. And I will kind of stay away from the combustion chamber area, but everything else will get a light coat. Okay, got the gasket all sealer on the gasket on all sides and stuff. I got uh, Squatch 253 out here, and we're going to see if we can get this slid on without any major problems. Good fit on the studs. <laughs> that looks good. No smash fingers or anything. Well, we get a light coating of oil on these threads. It doesn't take much. Probably going to get a little bit down where the nuts spit on top of the head too. It, uh, it's going to eliminate any friction when it comes to torquing. Uh, you'll probably get a whole lot more even torque this way with a little light oil. First off, we'll just get the nuts spun on. As you can see in the nuts, there's kind of like a machine surface on one side and nothing on the other. I put that side against the head. Uh, next up, I'm just going to take the speed wrench, just snug all these nuts up. And when you do this, I'm going to start from the center and do a rotation out towards each end. And next up, I'll take the torque wrench and I'm going to do three sequences. Finished torque is a 110 foot pounds. Okay, my first rotation I'm going to do at 50 foot pounds, or as some say, pounds feet. But the book says foot pounds, and I like foot pounds, so that's my preference uh, terminology. 
I've already started doing this, so we'll just do uh, wait for it to click. Next rotation I'm going to do at 80 foot pounds. Again, starting at center and working to the outside. And my last rotation, we'll do at 110 foot pounds. And after I do that rotation, I will go back over and do it a second time, just to verify. Okay, I'm going to do a second round at 110 foot pounds. And from my experience, a lot of times you'll get a little bit of turn on these center ones, but you go to the outside and they seem to be torqued where you need them. So we'll do one more round at 110 and call this uh, an installed head. Okay, I did get just a, a little bit more on them. So next thing before we do a final torque, this thing will have to be run warmed up and we'll probably have to pull the rocker shaft off again. But then after it's warmed up and uh, we'll give her a final torque and we should be good to go. So anyway, one more piece on the engine. Okay, everybody, another Super M project update. I did end up sandblasting this bell housing. I mentioned in the last video that I was probably gonna do it, and honestly, it blasted up pretty well. I blasted it inside and out, got everything nice and clean. And I've started coating the inside with the Glip Tall 1201 Red Enamel. I like to do all my clutch compartments, gear compartments, stuff like that with it. And what I'm gonna do is flip this over so that the large bell housing portion is up and do the finished painting. So last night I got a start and I did everything that's going to be upside down after I flip it. And hard to access, hard to see. I did the whole rim down there. So we're ready to flip this over, start turning the rest of the inside red. All right, we're flipped, we're ready to go. This little brush is all I use because this stuff coats amazingly fast. And honestly, this clip tall goes a long ways. I bought two quarts of this stuff back when I was going to first do X231 and I tell you what I've got like half a quart left out of the first can that I opened the other one I haven't even touched and I've done all of X231 I've done several other minor pieces and we're about to do this whole bell housing right here this stuff really goes a long ways and it covers really really well and I've also got a mask on you don't want to breathe this stuff but it's not good especially in a closed space like this it's better to have all of the proper equipment, so just finish uh, getting this mixed up and we'll go to it.
Okay, so it's the next day in the shop. I vacated overnight to let the fumes clear from this stuff. It gets pretty overwhelming in here, but between that bell housing and the bolster, that's a pretty decent cart load of work right there. Happy with how this bell housing cleaned up. Um, I kind of took a gamble on it. It was pretty rusty, but everything blasted up well. Surfaces look good. Inside is coated with the Gliptol to replicate best we could the factory sealer that was in there at one point in time. Bolster's ready. Pretty much ready to uh, start putting steering parts on, so that does it for this one. On to the next job.